Hey guys, in today's episode, we look back at week seven fantasy news, talk start sits, and discuss farting at the worst times in our party question. Welcome to the Coach and Commish podcast. No, not Adam Gase, and definitely not Roger Goodell. It's Chris and Sean breaking down fantasy football for the everyday man. Welcome back. You're here with the Coach and Commission. I'm Chris, Sean to my right. And today, let's look into let's look back at some week seven performers. And I really want to ask you this question as a Dolphin fan. Okay. Tua finishing QB1 in most most uh platforms. It was a mega bye week. Yeah. With 34.5 points. Is it believable? Can this happen week in, week out? For the Dolphins or for fantasy? For Tua and fantasy. Um, Dolphins are looking for no, the first pick. No, I, I think that it was inflated by four touchdowns. Um, they got down. This defense, I would think at some point, would get a little bit of it together so that they're not needing to put up so much points. Yeah, I mean, I think he is somebody who you could pick up and, and have an option to start. I, I don't see why he can't stream in a good matchup, but it doesn't vault him to me into an every week starter or anything. Yeah, even no. with if that defense in Miami does not improve, do you think two can give two plus touchdowns a game, close to three hundred yards, and and really? Yeah, it looks be like they're op- they're opening it up. That the run game, um, they lost Malcolm Brown for whatever that means. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I think they're gonna they're gonna have to throw the ball um, again. I think he's a good option as a streamer, but I'm definitely not ready to say, hey, I want to make two of my starter. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, a quarterback that is doing phenomenal now with this great receiver friend of his burrow chase that duo is that the new best quarterback to wide receiver connection in the nfl i mean i don't know how you can't say yes to that question they've just been on fire you know there was a lot of bad news coming out of camp for chase um, but it it probably was just the fact that he didn't play football for a year that it Mm -hmm. was taking him a little bit of time we see now what we we thought we would get out of chase and he's just I mean, unbelievably good. So I'm going to put this to you. Let's say, hypothetically, PPR league, um, full point PPR, Metcalf, Chase, who do you keep? I mean, it's, for me, it's easy right now. We, with Russell Wilson, we don't know when he's coming back. I, I, I'm taking Chase. Even with Russell back, I think I might still take Chase. I think there's more volume to be had in that offense, um, and he is by far the number one in that offense. Now, rest of the season with... Oh, a healthy Adams, Devontae Adams, a healthy Jamar Chase with both their quarterbacks. Which receiver do you think will finish up top? So rest of season, not the points that have been not, scored not so far. Yet. I mean, they're pretty close anyways. Um, we'll, we'll take out this week since he's on COVID list. For those of you who have Devontae Adams, do not start him tomorrow. Don't start him. <laughs> he's on COVID list. Will not play. But rest of season, I'm still taking Adams. There's more touchdowns to be had in that offense. Um but that just tells you the level of where he's at. He is now, you know, in the conversation for top five wide receiver. Hmm. Okay. Good on you, Morgan, for drafting him yeah. when we all laughed at you. Yeah, like especially where he took him is is now actually looking like a steal. Yep. All right, Dearness Johnson. What a game! What a game! That guy's story is phenomenal. He was hitting up the eight, like the the minor league football leagues that were going on, asking for a chance, and he's he was a starter in the NFL. This past week. He was. He got it done. He looked good. It'd be fantastic to keep playing him, but I believe Chubb is going to be back. Um, so bye-bye to Dearness Johnson. It was a fun one-time fling. So even even if Hunt is out, do you think there could be a 50-50 or a 60-40 split I think we're talking – I think – the I mean I guess because he performed so well there is an opportunity now that they will take Chubb off the field a little more but I would think that there would be situations where they thought Hunt could be in the game and where they're not losing much of a drop off in a runner as Chubb whereas now they'll probably view that as we need to keep our talent on the field and then on top of that as far as the Hunt role goes that's more of a Felton thing or that's you know I forget the other running back there is uh, they were using but it's not Dearness is more of the chubb role so i don't think that he's going to be very startable i my guess is he's he's probably looking at 20 percent of the snaps maybe 25 max even going into week eight here so guys who yeah them up. i guess week eight you could do it um i don't know who the browns play at this moment but if they have a good matchup i might i might consider it i think they'll ease chubb in for the first game but after that i, I think they play pittsburgh all systems go 
So, yeah, I mean, that's not a great matchup, but it's not the worst either. Yep, so if you can, you got somebody that really needs a running back really bad and he does understand what's coming coming back in Cleveland, sell Johnson. Yep. And then the big question here um, is the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh what's, my what's going on, dude? We all, Mr. Mahomes fan. Oh, Patty, my man. <laughs> it's uh, The defense was raw, was bad even looking at it last year, but there used to be a saying, there's no... No, no lead is safe with Patrick Mahomes on the opposite side. Yeah. Well, now it's safe. It seems to be. I, I the only thing I can see that's that's happening. I've, I've heard a couple of people talk about this. Um, is that defenses are forcing them to dink and dunk. They yep. they are not going to beat deep, be beat deep by Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey. They're going to cover that part of the field. They're going to double those two guys. They're going to do whatever they can and say you got to run the ball or you got to throw the ball ten yards, five yards at a time. And I think that, one, Andy Reid, I don't think, enjoys that style of play. He's a very no. innovative um, play caller and wants to call those plays. And then Mahomes, I mean, when you've been lighting the world on fire your whole career, it's kind of hard to now become the Tom Brady type and just take what the defense gives you. And when the the ability to go deep and stretch it for all these middle-tier receivers that they had, Amico Hardman, you know, yeah. Sammy Watkins from yesteryears, now they, they notice we need a respectable receiver on the opposite side of Hill. Yes, yeah. you got You can see Kelsey they tried the to get it with, with Gordon. Um, so you see they, they recognize they're that they're missing that. Um, but I think, yeah, that's probably where it's at. They're, that, they're able to focus now on those two pieces. They don't have a running back that scares anyone. Mm-mm. So I think they'll get it together. That's, I mean, if you're asking me rest of season, if the Chiefs offense is a top five offense, I think they get it together. Okay. Yeah, I mean... You're a great quarterback, future Hall of Famer, Patrick Mahomes. You're not going to be down for a while. The yep. defense will still be an issue, but that offense should be scoring. And then a small note here, very probably small. not very fantasy relevant, but we had to throw it in here. Uh, Mark Ingram was traded to the Saints, um, and I just said it. It's not a big deal to me. I'd, no big If deal. you have Alvin Kamara and you are keeping your handcuff, then it may be Mark Ingram now. I'm not even positive that it is Mark Ingram now. I, they just haven't had Tony. They obviously didn't like what they saw in Azigba. They, they need a little more, so... If you want to pick up Mark Ingram as a handcuff or a dart throw in case Kamara was to go down, then I don't, still don't think he would be very good, but he would have a starting running back. Yeah, so not huge note, noteworthy, but want so, to see your take on that. Transitioning from a terrible um, <laughs> running back that Trade, is yeah. no longer good, let's talk about some farts and party question time. Party question. Ian, would you like to go to a party in my pants? No, Brick. All right. Let's go. All right. So the party question of the week here. What's the? This is Chris's, by the way. I didn't. Yeah. I'm not the gross. I just one had to think about this. The worst time slash place to rip a fart. Yes. There's there's many options. You know, many people might say at a funeral or in the middle of church. Mm. Um, I'm gonna go with the wedding. But not the wedding itself, the wedding night. Oh, man, that would be bad. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> Chris here is getting married soon, um, so yep. he'll, he'll have to uh, make sure to not eat some gas-providing foods and yeah, be ready for this. But, yeah, I think that's the worst thing I could think of. Uh, on that night would be a um, kind of a mood killer. <laughs> it would be a mood killer. Very bad. I actually, How much do you love me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> give me four minutes to air out the room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so mine, I, I started making a list here, so we can add a couple more to this. All right. In a crowded elevator with strangers. Could yeah, you, that's a bad one because you're awful. trapped. Yeah, especially if it's audible fart. They yep. know it came from you, yeah. right? Not no silent one. During a job interview. That is a bad one. If you did not, if you don't get the job, you probably know exactly why. Well, right? yeah. <laughs> or it could be other things, but you're thinking, I farted. It's because I farted. It's because I farted. Um. All right. Because I'm getting married, it kind of had this, um, this this kind of thought in my head. But if you were like meeting, did this happened to you, Chris? No. <laughs> Me, if you're meeting people, just people in general for the first time. But I would put it even worse, uh, higher scale here. Meeting like her parents for the first time, and you're introducing yourself, and like you just shaking the father's hand, you give the mother a nice little hug, and then you go rip. You're like, whoops. <laughs> you know, I mean, that could be a very embarrassing time. Hopefully, those in laws are. Or her parents would be very uh, funny people and laugh at it, but it would be very embarrassing. Can you think of any other places? I can't, but I, I want the listeners to help us out here. Mm-hmm. So drop a comment below. Let us know 
What's what's the worst place to fart? Maybe we're missing one that's even worse than this. Oh yeah. I also think, you know, in a submarine. I'm trying no to think of a situation yeah. where you have your rear end right against someone when it would be really bad. Oh. I can't think of anything. Can't think of any of Getting those situations. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, while while a quarterback is hiking the ball, I don't know. I mean, they're probably used to that. That's happened. Yeah. They I've, get peed I've on. played quarterback. That's happened to me before. <clears throat> you get peed on? Uh, no. Oh, what is it? Stink? He's he was no that He's, was literally his name because Yeah, he, Mark Schlereth, he he would pee on himself just for blocking, but like he wasn't a center, he was a guard. Oh, okay. Uh, so that was different. My twin brother was my center for a few years. Uh, when I was quarterback in and mostly on the JV level, he was just a sweaty mess. <laughs> so yeah, it was awful. So it felt there. like it was peed. I know. I was like, dude, <laughs> stop sweating so much. All right. So from there, let's go to our turntables. Well, well, well. How the turntables? See, I didn't make the noise there. <laughs> All right. So turntables. We're looking for trade for or trade away targets here. Yep. Uh, well, a week to week basis. What we see from this week and moving on. Sean, who do you have for your turntable pick? Um, so I'm going to put Michael Carter out there. Um, so last week I had Miles Sanders. That didn't turn out too well. So hopefully for the health of Michael Carter, this is all right. Um, but I think he's somebody that people haven't quite caught on to. That he's taken over that role for the Jets. Now, it's the Jets, so it's not a fantastic place to have a running back. But he's up to 72% of the snaps. I think they're letting him take over that offense. I mean, it's not like Zach Wilson was setting the world on fire. Joe Flacco's coming in. There's only room for improvement. So if this offense is a little better, defense is a little better, which I would hope that Robert Sala would be able to get that figured out, then I would say that Michael Carter is somebody that you can buy cheap. I mean, he's yeah. somebody that was on waivers probably through the buy. He's somebody that I would target and try to get. Okay. If you're looking, there's not a lot of cheap running backs you can get, and I think he's one. All right, so I have a uh, trade away. All right. All right, so Melvin Gordon <coughs> is – it was hard for me to try to find someone here, but Melvin Gordon uh, is a running back that's going to start splitting, I think, even more 50-50 with Javante Williams toward, toward the rest of the season. And then you look at Jerry Judy coming back. Yeah. Um, Tim Patrick having a role on that team. You know, Cortland Sutton having a role there. I think Melvin Gordon will start underproducing. More of a flex than RB2. So do you think that by, let's say, I don't know, let's for the last five or six games of the year, do you think it's possible that Javante Williams takes over and is more of that 60 to 65% kind of guy? Because right now it's pretty much exactly 50-50, and it has been most seasons. So I right. didn't... For me personally, I don't think that split's going to change too much, but who knows? Maybe you know a couple big runs by Javante. They say, well, we need to give the rookie some more of a shot. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be – I think Javante will have more yardage, and the only way Melvin Gordon keeps his name relevant for fantasy the rest of the season are those goal line carries that he might get. Yeah, and that's – I mean, I'm here to tell you guys, I watched very closely because I just recently acquired Javante, and it is a 50-50, meaning – one drive for you, one drive for him. So it's it's to me, it's not a goal line thing. So you're just going to not only have to get lucky with getting a touchdown, but you have to be the one on the field when they have a good drive, which with right now the Denver Broncos, maybe Judy improves the offense. But yeah, I think I think either of those. Javante may even be a better one just because I think you can get more. You can sell that narrative like, hey, oh, this right. guy's going to take yeah. over as the rookie. And I really just think both of them are going to continue to be just mess starts. I mean, they're, they need to be rostered, but I think they're just never going to be like a top 20 running back. It's difficult, but if you can flip any of these guys to fill depth in, like wide receivers, if you need a better wide receiver one or two in a league where guys yeah, are like, looking for running back help. Just for, you know, just I, Michael Carter is not as good as Javante Williams. I would want Javante Williams. But if I could package deal, you know, and get, say, sell, he think he's getting a great two-for-one in Javante Williams, and I get Michael Carter as a throw-in with a good wide receiver, to me, I don't think you're losing that much. Um, you're, they're probably going to be a little more volume with Michael Carter, and, you know, there's just as much an opportunity to get touchdowns right now. I like that. All right, from there, we go to our start sit uh suggestions going into week eight and i'll start here because i've been wrong two weeks in a row buddy have you i don't who was my start last week i don't even know I, yeah i'll my, look that up while you tell my the sit listeners. last who, year who not to my start. sit last week was khalil herbert and he did the one thing no one's done to tampa bay and 
let's get to the ran all over him. Well, first off, Matt Nagy didn't care about winning the game. He just kept running the ball, being down by thirty plus points. Like he wasn't even trying to pass the ball. I was like, "Let's run it again. Let's run it again." I I couldn't understand that as a coach as well. I'm like, "You got to show a little more heart in your team and and throw the ball." Yeah. Um. But then I was wrong the week before about uh, Khalil for a fan question about starting him over Devontae Booker. Um. But although you weren't wrong on your start, you had Dearness yeah. Johnson and that you smashed that. So yeah. So Herbert, who's, who's your start this week? So you're starting Herbert. Yeah. Well, that was more of like an apology. Who's your start for the week? All right, so for this week, um, who, I, who I'm who i going to put out there to start, um, we talked about the Denver offense, and I think that you can start Jerry Judy. This is a scary proposition. He is just Ooh. coming back from this uh, pretty severe injury. He's been on IR. But the way the team is talking about him, I think he's ready. He went through his full warm-ups on Thursday night. There was potential that he was going to play last week. Um, and I just think that they need him in this offense, and they're going to use him right away. So I'm giving you the confidence that I'm not expecting big things, but I do think that he will see the full array of snaps. I don't think they're going to limit him, and I think that you can put him in because Teddy loves the guy. I mean, yeah, when he, he does. just that first little bit we saw, there was a connection, um, and I think that he's going to have a pretty good rest of season. Wish I kept him. Yeah, and I, to make it clear, yes, I'm saying start Khalil Herbert. He's going against the 49ers. I think he's... He's going to be a legit back, even yeah, with Montgomery coming back. Yeah, he's he's taken over that second role. I think Damian Harris is done. You can drop him. And like you said, I, I'm I, as a Montgomery owner in a lot of leagues, I'm a little scared that um, he might take a little bit. They may say, well, we don't need to use as much Montgomery here. Yeah. All right, so for our sits, we are going Dolphins. Same team, <laughs> same game. I'll go first It's always here. a good idea to sit Dolphins. All right, so I'm choosing a receiver, and it's Jalen Waddell. No, I'm interested in this because yeah. I, I might disagree a little bit. Yeah, some some people might disagree and say, hey, they're going to have to throw the ball and they're going to have to go deep. Uh, but the Bills have been sneaky good, mm-hmm. especially against number one option receivers. Uh, but I don't think Jalen Waddell is one of those guys yet. He is uh, inside. He's go the deep only option right now. Right now, but he's it's not a refined receiving core. And the first time around, he, Waddell did okay. got eight targets with six catches, but... Second time around against the Bills, you know, a you know divisional opponent, and the Bills coming off a bye week, and that loss. might make it, oh yeah, they are hungry, and it might be a, extremely tough for Waddle to kind of even produce the same numbers that he had the first time against Buffalo. So I don't think this is what you mean, like you can't start him, because I think because of volume, you will, there'll be situations where you can, and I just want to bring that up that I think, I don't think he's a great start, but... He is getting so much volume because there is no one else. It's him and Gesicki, and that's it. That's the yeah. whole offense right now. Um, where, where do you see Waddle in most fantasy lineups? The flex or the wide receiver two spot? Definitely more of a flex. Um, you know, we got Morgan early. He's got a pretty good wide receiving core. He hasn't started him, but this week he may have to. Um, and I think he's somebody that can come off your bench to get you when you have a bye week guy, um, get you by. I think he's got potential for a touchdown. He's He's already gotten a couple... Um, and yeah, he's the volume guy. Can always he still hasn't kind of made that one big play, but we're kind of waiting for we're it. Waiting for it. It's it's gonna happen. Um, my sit is Miles Gaskin. Um, he's been on a hot streak here. He's done pretty yeah. well the last few weeks. Malcolm Brown is out now. You may be tempted to think, well, all those carries are now gonna go to Miles Ma- Gaskin. I can feel assured. The issue is the Bills. We just talked about this yeah. defense, and I'm scared because although King Henry last week went bananas on him or on the Bills. I don't think, I mean, what we've seen from the other running backs is 63 yards total. That's the highest total a team has reached against the Bills. And I believe that might have been Miles Gaskin. So, yeah. again, another volume play that you don't absolutely have to sit. But if you have other options, um, like I might even be, well, Michael Carter's on. Is he on by? No, he's coming off. No. Nope. Yeah, he's not on by. So he's somebody that I would consider starting over Miles Gaskin just because of the matchup. And they're going to get probably similar work. Yeah. So those are our start sit uh, suggestions, <laughs> yep. uh, advice for what they what they yeah. are. Take it for what it's worth. Just be wary of the dolphin, except for Tua last week. Um, it's true. So anything else for our listeners' commission before we sign off? Um, I don't think so. I mean, again, we're, we keep begging you guys. Just let us know what you're thinking of this format. Uh, we're still trying to figure out some segments. We're not married to the way we're doing this right now. If, if, you, if you guys have some ideas on what would be more helpful to you, then we can do that. Um, I want to go back and look at my start sit here and see if I did well. Sit, lock it, start Elijah Mitchell. Yeah. 
That worked. You did good. Oh, that was good. Yeah. So so listen to me and then maybe not. What did Chris's I say last week? So you had DeAndre Ernest Johnson, which was fantastic start. Sweet. I just and then you start. said Khalil Herbert to be sat, which yeah. I kind of agreed with, but the world. Everyone uh, thought that. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you for listening. Listen to the outro voice here at the end. So follow us on all social media platforms, and to get uh, to jump on our Facebook fantasy advice group. Um, that's been a lot of fun to answer those start sick questions throughout and the week. And help us out, guys. Sometimes we get busy on Sunday morning. If you got an answer for somebody who's in there, we I think we might have missed one this week. Oh um, yeah, I missed one after game after kickoff. I was like, yeah. So if if you guys want to help us, feel free. Like I said, we're we don't claim to be these crazy experts. We just play a lot of fantasy football, know enough about it that we can help out. And I think the community in there knows a lot too. So chime in. Everybody yep. answer each other. All right, guys. Well, thank you for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Deuces. Deuces. Thanks for listening to the Coach and Commish podcast. Don't forget to check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Coach and Commish. And join our Facebook group called Fantasy Football Advice with the Coach and Commish for direct access to weekly waiver wire and start sit advice.